In this video, I'm going to sister up a floor joist in my basement, and we're going to do it right now. So I've been working down in my basement, moving stuff around for my workshop. Here's a little sneak peek. And as I was doing that, I noticed this joist here. See how it's broken? I've noticed it before, but recently I think it's getting worse. So in order to avoid any further issues with that, and just to be on the safe side, I am going to sister of a joist. And I don't know why they call it sistering. Basically you take a joist of a similar size or the same size and you butt it up next to this and that uh, supports the floor in combination with the old joist. And the only thing I can think of is sisters stick together and work together. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know why they call it sistering, let me know in the comments. You can see somebody took a board here to help uh, stop it from getting any worse. So this has been broken for a long time and they did the same thing on the other side. Let's put a board there with some nails. So I'm going to take one of those boards off. Uh, the first step is to decide which side I want to put the joist on and it doesn't really matter. Really, uh, you just go with what's easiest. And I think that this side is gonna be the easiest. I have that board to take off, these wires. I also need to take out these pieces, which are called bridging or cross bracing. This piece and get my junk out of here. Again, that wire, and then I can put my joist up, sit it on the beam here, all the way over to the sill and tie those together. So first step, clean out this bay. Take out this wire first, and it's not a bad idea to shut the power off, just in case. I'm just gonna be very careful. Get a flathead behind the wire and pry it out. I'll save these staples and reuse them. And as I go, I'm just gonna make sure I didn't damage the insulation at all. And you don't wanna really pry these like crazy because you can mess up the wire on the inside. Just be careful and go easy. Another way to take these staples out that are even safer and shouldn't damage the wire is take some big pliers and try and grab onto that staple and pry it away. Don't pry against the wire, pry against the wood. Whatever works for you. I don't think I have to cut these. I don't think they're in there very good. is tucked out of the way and now I just want to check to make sure there's no nails or anything sticking out like this. I think that's more than an inch and a half so I might be okay because I'm planning on putting the top in first and then sliding the bottom over. If it gets in my way I'll have to cut that. There's a knot. I'm gonna have to hammer that up or it'll just get pushed up with the joist. Just go along the bottom, make sure there's no nails sticking out like this that's gonna stop my board from going in there. Every situation's different. Not all floor joists are the same thing, uh, but I have done a couple videos on this that might give you the basic principles. I did one where I was replacing termite damage and then another one where they basically cut a joist in half uh, for some old plumbing that wasn't there anymore, so I added a joist there, sistered up a joist, if you will. So hopefully 
between this video and those videos, it'll give you a good idea of what you would need to do. So now to determine the width of the, the board you need to use, I've noticed in this house that all of these joists are pretty much different. So this one is about seven and five eighths. This one is about seven and a quarter, a little strong. This one, about seven and an eighth. So it goes on like that over and over again. So it's, it's never gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna use a two by eight, which is about seven and a quarter, maybe seven and an eighth and use that. Again, the idea is not to completely replace this joist. It's just to put something up there to help it support the floor like it's already doing. So I have myself a two by eight ready to go. I'm just gonna measure the length. Make sure I'm in the right spot. One nineteen. Okay. Make sure that end is square, which it is. One nineteen. Mark it with my square. And now I need to crown this board, which is something I actually made an entire video about. But the short version of it is boards have a natural curve where if you look down, it's very hard to see on camera. You kind of need it in person, although you can see right here how the curve goes in towards the middle of the board down there. So up here, it goes up as well, but that one's harder to see. So this would be crown up so this way so i'll make a mark that's the crown meaning the board goes this way so what happens if you're framing something like a deck or a floor joist you want to put the curve the same way so the the top right here you would likely want this on the top because you are going to have some deflection no matter what so you'd want it like this and you want the boards to all be the same way so they don't have like a, a wave to them. However, this house, um, I guarantee you, the middle has sank a bit. So I'm not trying to raise anything up. So I think I want to put the crown the other way where it's dipping. So I don't want to disturb that too much. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to go anywhere but I think it'll be easier to get this board in. If I was trying to raise that floor because there was a big dip and these joists were undersized, I would put it like this. But since I'm just trying to support what's already there, I'm gonna put it like this. I just wanna test fit it and make sure the length and everything is okay, to get an idea of how it's gonna go. I should be able to just pop it in there and leave it in there and move it around while I remove that board and do a couple other things. So the tricky thing is I gotta get it past these wires over here. Hopefully I have enough room. Sneak it in there. Get past this pipe. take about half inch off. This is another thing you need to think of when you determine which side you're going to be putting the joist up. And make sure it's possible. You might have to remove some blocking and other things. I'm going to have to get that wire out of the way. So two things I noticed while test fitting it. Number one, I need to get this wire out of here so I can actually get the board in. And the second thing is, since this 
is seven and five eighths, I believe. And my board is seven and a quarter. Uh, I am gonna put the crown up because there is a gap. So that way, if there's deflection with the new board, it'll, it'll help to correct that. That's the thought anyways. As long as it's sitting on here and sitting down there, we should be good. So I'll just take this wire out and put it back up. Okay, third time's a charm, hopefully. Okay, here we go. That's gonna be great. It looks like that's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be sitting on the bottom there, at the top, in the middle, it's tight. Over here, it's sitting right there. It's not gonna sit on this bunch, but that's okay. Probably got about two inches there, which is good. Sweet. So now I'm just gonna get it out of the way so we can do a couple other things before we put it in there. Now what I have here is some pieces that I'm gonna use to hold up this joist. This would be handy if you were trying to correct a sagging joist. I'm gonna basically put this on the floor, measure from here to the bottom of the floor joist, and then put this board on here and support it in the middle. I screwed these two two by fours together, but this is a better approach if you you know that you're gonna have a lot of weight on the floor joist. This will be just fine. Get a little tip that'll tell you where to put this. Go to the center, drop something, Wherever it lands is center. Yep, I already cut this to do some floor joists down here, so it is the height that I need. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of pressure on that. This is kind of a just in case thing for this situation. Now I'm gonna put a couple screws in here. And the reason for that is because if I end up putting this in and it raises this up a little bit off of the jack, I just picture disastrous things happening, like the water mains right there, and I just picture this falling and <laughs> breaking my water main and flooding my basement, and I don't want any of that happening. So I'm just gonna put some temporary screws in here so that if it does raise up, it's just gonna float hanging on this. That's good. Now I have to take the scab piece off, so I don't foresee anything happening over here, but I'm a just in case kind of person. So I have a two by four going down here to the foundation, just in case. So now I can take that board off. So I'm supported there and there. is broken yeah I think what happened there's this big knot right here and it looks like it broke around that knot sometimes if you have a knot in a certain location like this it weakens the board and this can happen but we're gonna fix it all right I'm just gonna load this up with construction adhesive Our new joist. Sneak it in there. Make sure the top is tight first. Then I can hammer the bottom in. I'm going to do this evenly. I've done this two different ways. I've done it where you put the top in first 
and then push the bottom over. That's easier because you only have two points that the joist is sitting on. Uh, but sometimes you need to put the bottom in first and then hammer the top. And I've had to use blocks and everything else to try and wedge it over. It depends on what kind of access you have to those two points that are carrying this. And if you can see, that raised that up a little bit. So this is loose. So that would have fallen over. So I'm glad I put some screws in it. Learn from mistakes. This is sitting tight right there. There's a gap up there. It's tight up there against the floor and sitting on the beam. And at this point, you see that dip? If you were going to correct that dip, I'm not going to because then I'd have a hump in my floor unless I did every one of these joists. So at this point, if you were trying to correct a dip or something like that, you would use your jack. Like I said, took some of the weight off uh, and you would jack this up before you nail it or screw it or do whatever you were gonna do. I'm gonna use some three inch construction screws just cause there's a gap on the bottom. I'm gonna try and suck that in as you can see and nails could do it, but uh, I think screws will work better. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of screws in this and we should be good to go. I'm pretty sure it's the old board that's cupped and not the new board, but I am able to close up that gap a little bit with these screws. It's going about every, every 10, 12 inches or so. piece out. Take this out. Sweet. Now all I have to do is reroute that wire and put back anything else I want to put back. Should be good. Joist is sistered. I am genuinely curious about that term. If you know, let me know. I Googled it, but couldn't find much. I put the bracing back in because that does help with the distribution of weight and all set. Now, if this was a situation where you jacked this up a lot and you wanted to keep it up because it was sagging or whatever the case, on the other side, I would recommend running some screws in there as well, or some of these timber locks or big lags. I just put a couple in here because I don't think it's going anywhere. Awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, I will leave some links in the description over to the videos that have even more detail on this. If you learned something, let me know. Or if I did something that you wouldn't have done, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, you can click hereish and hereish and check them out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.